Because the baby is literally asleep, like, 20 feet from us. And we don't want her to wake up during this video. It's so weird. We have to be quiet now. I think we can talk normal right now. Yeah, I think but... normally we do the intro and we're just kind of, like, loud and obnoxious. But And we need a new intro because that's like a... We need something fresh. You know Yeah, we're going to do a new one and incorporate her in it because she's been more awake now. But I think you're, you're talking about, like, the beginning video. I was talking about just, like, our... We definitely need both, though. And we are family pictures, but let's not get yeah, we're topic. getting off topic. This video is already probably going to be super long, um, but we just wanted to kind of talk about our IVF story, and um, for people who are going through it, uh, maybe you can learn something from it. Or if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. But when we were going through this, we felt like there wasn't a whole lot of content out there that we could, I guess, kind of consume to make ourselves feel better about the process. What do you think about the situation? Yeah. We really binge watch a lot of videos that we could find related to IVF, but like he was saying, there's really not much up there because a lot of people don't share their story. I think a lot of women are, women and men who have infertility on either side are embarrassed about having to go through the process to get a baby, but it is what it is, you know what I mean? And, um, and before we get to the video, yeah. uh, first off, thank you guys so much for checking us out. Uh, join the family today. It's free. All you got to do is click that subscribe subscribe button Can't even talk Click the subscribe button uh, like the video and uh, if you have any questions like I said, please feel free to ask them Hopefully she's not waking up if she is then we'll have to bring her in a video because we're not stopping and um, yeah, so This video we just want to go kind of step by step why we had to do IVF what the IVF process was like for us and of course you know um, the after effects or the aftermath of yeah. the whole process emotionally physically and of course it was successful for us so I'm truly blessed you know for it to, to work out but um, and if you guys have any questions at all feel free to reach out to him reach out to me or reach out to our couples page we always try to respond and you know hectic our vacuum cleaner just wanted to start it randomly oh, I'm gonna stop him <laughs> And the vacuum cleaner is so stupid that he's been stuck under the tree for the past... Just the day. Oh, well, it's been one day? Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever. And guess what his name is? We named him Hector. Hector. We named <laughs> our vacuum cleaner But Hector. anyways, like I was saying, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, him, our couples page. We always try to respond. And, you know, be there for people because we know how hard it was to go through the process and you don't really know what to expect. You know, you mm -hmm. just kind of, kind of blindly going into it. At least we were. So, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. So, um, I can start us off. Go ahead. So, um, I want to say maybe, well, it was in 2019 we decided that we wanted to try to have a baby after I had, um, I had a cyst removal. A cyst that was 11 centimeters big. So I had to get a C-section cut, and then when they did that, they found out that I had stage four endometriosis. If you don't know what endometriosis is, basically scar tissue that you would normally not scar tissue. I don't know how to explain it. To me, it's like scar tissue buildup that you would normally get on your lining during your period, but it grows everywhere else. So it can affect your fertility. If it can affect your fertility depending on the person, it doesn't affect everyone's fertility who has it, but for me, it did. Um, after I had my surgery, we, we tried for about two years and we had no luck of conceiving. And when I mean we tried, that means, you know, actively trying every month, tracking ovulation and, you know, doing the do when you're supposed to do it. We didn't have any luck. So my OBGYN referred us to a IVF doctor, um, Dr. Jason Griffith in the Woodlands area that she normally sent her clients that 
well everybody don't have to go there but she recommends him because he has really good reviews and you know so we reached out and um we had a consult i think it was what march 2021 yeah we had a consultation he literally um you know kind of told us what you know his recommendation for us would be and that was ivf and he told her that the time frame for us to do it wasn't you know we didn't have a whole whole lot of time like we had maybe you know three 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 to five years max where he felt comfortable that we could do it successfully so what that meant for us was we needed to figure out okay how can we afford it how can we actually do it physically with you know out kind of impacting our lives in a way that that would be you know detrimental to a newborn you know it was a lot of conversations that we had and ultimately and during that time too we weren't married so mm -hmm. you yeah, know i point. had my own insurance he had his own insurance i was actually still under my parents insurance and um you know and her IVF insurance didn't cover it <laughs> ivf costs a lot and i remember after we had our consult we were like freak like we can't do this right i was now. a freak she was well, i was like freak because i'm like how the hell are we gonna afford this like if you know about ivf beginning costs can be about twenty thousand for one cycle not including your medicine and then your medicine is between five to ten thousand depending on how much you need so i was just freaking out because i'm like i don't want to take a loan out to do this but i really want a baby it was just a lot long story short if you do ivf without insurance expect to be paying between twenty to forty thousand on average and i know that's a wide margin but it's you know, true. it's you know it, it, it's rare that you're you would be on the lower end. Like everything will literally have to work out perfectly for you to be on that lower end. Um, and also, it, it it could not work. And if it doesn't work, you gotta pay then another. You, you you may have to pay for more medicine. You know, depending on who you're doing your your uh, procedures with, they may allow you to try again for free, like certain things. But there are also some people who do go to like Mexico and other countries where IVF is a lot cheaper, maybe half the cost, but mm -hmm. but we we, we you weren't know, trying to be traveling in and out of the country. No nor do we necessarily trust, you know, uh, stuff that's not reputable. So if if the reputation isn't good, like the doctor we went to, like he had fantastic reviews. He was a really, really good guy. Like I could tell he really cared about that's her. <laughs> She's so sweet. We're but, going back for our next baby. With yeah, him. yeah. We, we if could, we have to do it, we could tell that he really cared about us and he wanted to make sure that we were successful. And he also kept everything realistic. Like he didn't try to upsell us on, you know, this is definitely going to work. Or you know, he gave us the reality of the situation. And I think you have to be grounded in reality, but you also need to be hopeful. And um, I don't think it works when people sell you false dreams you know i think you have to be realistic but at the same time you know optimistic but i feel like regardless whether you're going through ivf or not you have to see both ends you have to know that hey this could also not work and this could also work i think a lot of people go into the ivf process thinking that you're guaranteed to have a baby at the end of it and that's what we hope for but it doesn't necessarily happen like that for everybody like i've seen some girls on tiktok who have literally went through like 10 cycles of IVF and still haven't gotten a baby. Let me get my best friend. There she go. And as she goes to get the baby, I guess I'll say this. Um, just because you're starting IVF doesn't mean that the end goal is near. Um, IVF is a journey. And, you know, it's not just like she said, you know, you start IVF and the baby is just going to be there. You know, it may take you multiple cycles to, to get to where you're trying to get to, and and that's fine. Um, but you have to keep the long term goal um, in your vision because if you don't, then you're gonna you're gonna lose yourself emotionally, and a lot of people do that, and it's very very easy to. So um, here's the the little miracle baby here. Mari girl. So I guess back to the IVF stuff. Um, Naomi, she had you know she was battling infertility. And I, on the other hand, I I was, you know, I guess considered normal. So I didn't I was have... really hoping it was him and not me, but it was me. <laughs> so um, let's get into kind of just the IVF process as a whole. So w w how does the process start so that people know? So basically with IVF, you will start off with the egg retrieval process, which consists of shots in your stomach. 
Um, and then you'll have the egg retrieval between 10 to 15 days later. So what do the shots do? So, so the, people the shots know. basically make your body rapidly produce eggs. So normally as a woman, you will produce one to two eggs every month of your cycle and the medication that they put you on make you overproduce. So some people get between, I mean, it depends on the person. Some people only get like a couple eggs and then some people also get 40 eggs. It just depends on you and how your body reacts to the medicine. Um, for my situation, I ended up having to stem, meaning like do the shots in my stomach for about 14 days. It consisted of two to three shots and then around closer to when I was about to have the egg retrieval, you would do a shot to prevent you from ovulating just so that they can get the eggs out themselves. And um, I think for my egg retrieval, we were able to get seven, was it seven eggs? Something like that. Seven it, eggs, five were mature, and three were fertilized. So, like, just because you get a lot of eggs don't mean that all of them were mature. They only inject the mature ones with the sperm. Mature meaning the appropriate size. I think it was between... It's, like, viable to yeah. actually create something. So, and, and just to kind of, I guess, uh, this, describe a little bit more, the phase one of IVF, like she said, it, it's all about trying to make sure that the the woman can generate enough viable eggs so that they can actually marry the sperm and the eggs together mm -hmm. and you know those shots stimulate i guess the hormones to develop those eggs faster and bigger and and i guess i guess more healthy um for her like she said egg count was a, a big deal because you know she had that was part I had of her. A, a diminished ovarian reserve because my endometriosis was on my ovaries and it had to get scraped off a little bit during my surgery. So I already was starting with a very low AMH. And if you don't know what AMH is, it's basically like your ovarian reserve, how many, it don't tell you exactly how many eggs that you have in your lifetime, but whatever your number is, if it's low, then that means like you don't have, you know, a good number to start with. And yeah. some people, if your AMH is high, then that means you will have issues with having too many eggs. And just because you have too many eggs don't mean that all of them are quality or good. And if you have a high AMH, then probably have PCOS. And, and for, for Naomi, we didn't think that she had any issues as far as egg quality, but you know, it, it was yet to be seen. Because, we just knew that we weren't gonna get a lot. Yeah, we knew we weren't gonna get a lot. Like we will go in um, and, and during this like 14 day, you know, uh, process of doing shots, you would go in, was it like once a week or, or twice a week to mm -hmm. the um, fertility clinic and they will like do ultrasounds of your ovaries. In your vagina. Right, so that they can see, okay, how are the eggs developing? Do we need to give you more uh, medicine as far as the shots? Do we need to back you off? Are Actually, you and that happened after the first two appointments, he decided to up my dosage because I wasn't responding quick enough. Yeah, you may have had like you two or three. You can't stem for like minutes. more than 15 days, I want to say. If you yeah. go longer than that, then it's, you know, all bad. But um, like I was saying, we had three that ended up fertilizing. And, you know, once they fertilize, it's not guaranteed that they will become an embryo. So I was already like really worried because I'm like, we only have three, you know, and what if they say expect to have half of what you have. But you know, like we also need to back up a little bit because the egg retrieval, I think that's important that we talk about a little bit too. Because we didn't expect that it would be as um, as difficult as it was. Um, we heard a lot of people say, okay, the egg retrieval is not that bad. You know, you may feel a little, um, you know, um, irritated afterwards or, you know, you, it may, you may not feel oh. comfortable. But ex explain after, you know, and the egg retrieval is literally a surgery. They go in. And I don't know how it's like a uh, so they explain it. So it's like a probe thing that they stick in so that they can see where the eggs are. And then there's like pretty much a needle attached to the end of it. So like they're stabbing through your vagina wall and sucking it out. But when it comes out, it just looks like a lot of blood. You don't see the eggs because they're very small. Um, but but yeah. explain what happened like once we got home. So we, we did the egg retrieval. We, we went to the, the surgery room or whatever at the fertility fertility clinic and egg retrieval happened you know he was doing good we, we brought you home and then immediately like 30 minutes after like 30 minutes after i started having the worst oh my god Man, she's pooping you're she oh i don't know if y'all hear that 
But let, let, let her finish it and I'll change. We'll cut it. And I'll... Oh, she stinks. But um, so after the egg retrieval, I came upstairs. I was laying on the couch. I was in discomfort, but normally, as you know, from the anesthesia, you kind of feel a little woozy goozy. Um, and then, like, out of nowhere, I started getting severely bad abdominal pain. And, like, I was really bloated, too. Granted, you know, I just had all these injections. And um, I was sitting on the couch. I remember telling him that my stomach was hurting. I didn't feel good. I couldn't breathe. Like, it was just a lot going on. So, I was trying to wait it out. Yeah, Mommy. I was trying to wait it out, but I ended up going to the emergency room because it just got so bad. I couldn't even try to sleep it off. It was that bad. And uh, we went to the emergency room and basically, what is it called? Uh, it's called OHSS or something like that. It's when your body like, I don't know how to explain it. Oh my God, bestie. You took yeah, nasty poopy. She pooping, pooping. But um, basically my body had produced, it's, okay, mommy my uh estrogen levels were really 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 high and that can stimulate ohss so normally they check your hormone levels too as you're going to the doctor to see how your follicles are doing and i have endometriosis which is high estrogen so pretty much i had a lot of fluid buildup and they didn't want to suck anything out so they just gave me pain meds and sent me back home but um as time went on it got worse I couldn't sleep laying down. I literally had to sleep sitting up. Like everything, it just hurt it so bad. Yeah, so her egg retrieval was not like how a lot of people say, oh, it wasn't that bad. Like it was really, really bad for her. And um, like it was probably the worst pain that I had seen you in. Um, I could not sleep. I remember he was sleeping and I was like, I can't sleep. I was sleeping, sitting up straight. I think by the next day, you started to feel a little bit. Mm -mm. Like, it took up to like a week for me to feel better. But like. I mean, it wasn't like it was the first. Yeah, the you first know, day was. Six awful. hours. You know, it was it was pretty bad. But, um, you know, back to the, the count, right? And the egg numbers and all that kind of stuff. Um, something that you guys should expect. You know, whenever you're you're getting the calls from the doctors about, okay, we we were able to pull this many, this many fertilized. Um, keep in mind that these numbers don't really matter as long as you get something like be happy because on average they say half of half of half you know will make it but everyone's situation is so different that you got to look at it for what you can look at it for and that's you don't really know you don't know anything there are so many people who had one embryo that made it and that one embryo turned into a human being so and it's you can't be hard on yourself because like he was saying you're like oh my god all these numbers i need a lot i need a lot but if you want to be realistic if you were conceiving naturally it's one anyways you know mm -hmm. what i mean so you just don't be hard on yourself through this process it's already a hard process and you're gonna be you're gonna be hard on yourself you're gonna be looking at other people like dang how come they got 13 and we only got three you know if, if that's the case for you and just you know Keep your, your, your mind in, in the right place and understand that everyone's different and, you know, it's a journey. So some people, they do multiple cycles just to get, you know, two or three embryos and that's perfectly fine. Um, the but, best thing too, don't compare yourself. Exactly. To I was just about to say that. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Just focus on you and your partner and make sure that you guys support each other. And, and keep don't set no outlook. expectations. Don't. I think that's the best thing I could say because I was like, I hope I have this amount. Like, just go through the process. Like he said, it's a journey and it's going to be different for everyone. It's going to be different for every cycle. So just go through it and, you know, just pray about it and have high hopes that everything will work out for you. Mm -hmm. So literally after the egg retrieval, doctor tells you, okay, you have six or seven eggs, right? And then later that day, they call us and they say, okay, five of those eggs were mature. And we were able to, um, I guess, do the ICSI, yeah, fertilize. So we were able to uh, fertilize those. And ICSI is basically when they take the sperm and they literally like inject it inside of the egg. There's and also an option to just put the sperm with the eggs and let it try to go itself, but sometimes that doesn't work. And usually they want to do ICSI when they want to like, um, they want a higher rate of uh, fertilization, especially if you have lower numbers. It's like they don't want to mess around and and you know leave it up to chance or whatever mm -hmm. but um so they told us you know five of them 
were, were viable eggs that could be fertilized. So that's what they were going to do the ICSI with. Then they called us the next day and they said, okay, it looks like uh, three of them are, was it the next day or was it literally five days later? I think they- No, they tell you how many were fertilized and then you get an update on day three how the three are doing. So like, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. some of them don't make it past three days. So for us, we knew immediately that we had three, um, three fertilized um, embryos or embryos that were forming. So of course we we're kind of bummed out. Um, I wasn't as much bummed out, but I was kind of bummed out because I knew she was disappointed and she wanted more and she didn't think that we were gonna make it to day five with all of them. You know, we, we were just hoping for one, really. So they told us that at day five, they called us and this is the big day. So usually um, at day five, you, you'll start to know if these embryos are actually going to be able to um, create a baby. And you would, okay, so I should start off saying too, you have a fresh transfer or a frozen transfer. We did a frozen transfer. But if you were doing a fresh transfer, then you would transfer the embryo about three to five days later. And the thing is with the with fresh transfer, I don't think you're able to do any testing on the embryos to no. determine if they have any um, genetic. Yeah, genetic defects that could affect the pregnancy. So that's just kind of a risk that you'll take. And you don't have to, you know, do genetic testing like we did. The reason why we did it was because our doctor recommended it and he said that a frozen transfer is, is what it would be best for us. But definitely, you know, do what your doctor, your doctor rec recommends. Um, and the reason he said it would be best for me, because like I said, I developed OHSS and I needed time for my body to go back to normal before I start injecting more mm -hmm. meds into myself. So we had to wait two weeks for our genetic testing, which feels like forever. Mm -hmm. When the two weeks came... But wait, 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 before you even get to the genetic testing, on day five, this is the big call. And, oh, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's literally the one of the highlight points of IVF. Because at this point, you know, it's been five days since your retrieval. You know how many were fertilized potentially. And you're going to get the number of how many blastocysts you have. And the blastocyst is essentially... A clump a, of cells. No, it, it's not really just that. It, it's, it's a clump of cells it, too. No, it's the embryo that has formed from the egg and the sperm. But most people so, don't know what an embryo looks like, and it just looks like a blob of cells. But it, it, <laughs> it's a growing human being, so that's the main point I'm trying to make. So day five, that's when they call you and they tell you, okay, how many made it, how many didn't make it. So mind you, we had three in the game. We had three to potentially become a blastocyst. They call us and they said, okay, um, Two of them are day five blastocysts and they're growing just fine and they're ready to be frozen. And then they said the last one is still growing but it's lagging behind a little bit. So we'll check again in two days to see where it's at and we'll give you another update. So immediately we were very excited because mm -hmm. you know we had some that, we had two, chances. we had two chances to do a transfer and that's really all we wanted. We wanted the opportunity to be able to do a transfer. So two days go by and the doctor calls again and she's like, we have great news for you. So the, the one that was kind of lagging behind actually made it to blastocyst. So sometimes it takes a little bit longer than five days for it to become a blastocyst. But generally the embryos that get to blastocyst at day five are your stronger, higher quality embryos most of the time. Um, but for us, we also got lucky that all of our embryos were about the highest quality I think only one of them was wasn't the highest. It was just good. But it was like the the it one right good. below the highest quality. So And if you didn't know they rank your um embryos based off of I guess how they develop and what they look like. So mm -hmm. So all of them were perfect as far as chromosomes, all of the genetic testings came back. Wait, and I wanna say too, just because you have a fair or a poor grade embryo doesn't mean that it won't work. Many women still get pregnant with fair grade embryos. It's just when it looks excellent, it it's better. You know what I mean? Yeah, when they look a particular way, usually they grow at the rate that the doctors would feel comfortable with. But that doesn't mean that you need to have all excellent. You can have fair, right. you know, I think that at the end of the day, as long as you have the opportunity to transfer, just keep a positive outlook. 
And um, even if you don't have the opportunity to transfer, you know, that just is a learning opportunity for you and your doctor to say, okay, what can we do different in the next cycle to make sure that we have a better result? Mm -hmm. So after that, you know, we were extremely happy. We were like, okay, we have three embryos. We can actually do a transfer. You know, we were at this point hoping, okay, hopefully we have, they you know, both genders. Genetic. Well, we were hoping to have both genders and we were hoping that they would test genetically normal. Once you decide to test your embryos, if you get an embryo that's abnormal, they will not transfer it. Mm -hmm. Like, at all. Um, I think the only abnormal considered one that they would transfer is a mosaic embryo, and that's because it has the opportunity to fix itself. Um, some chromosomes that are missing when you find out genetic testing just aren't compatible with life, so they're just not even going to risk it. And if, mm -hmm. say for instance, you do have one that's missing, I think chromosome 21 is Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. You could still transfer it, but they would prefer not to. And the thing is, the reason why they prefer not to is because they don't want to put the mother at risk. And also, if like like let's say, you know, they know for a fact that this baby won't have a liver or they it won't have a left lung or something like that, then it is the likelihood that the baby will survive is extremely low. So instead of putting you know everyone through that stress. It's like let's let's you know reconsider our options and, and go about you know trying to better the next cycle so that we get embryos that are you know going to likely give us the baby that we want. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, you know, two weeks pass by, we get our call mm -hmm. that oh, and this is funny because he was in a meeting, um, a face to face meeting with uh, I don't know I guess people from his job, and um, the lady called me. And I was talking to her and she's like, we got the results. She said, all of them tested normal. And I was like, that's wonderful. Like I was excited. And she said, do you want to know the gender? And I'm like, at first I was going to say no, but then she was like, they're all the same gender. So I was like, damn. You she might told you that? Yeah. Dang, she just, that that's kind of messed up. Well, I, she asked me if I wanted to know and I was like, yes, maybe. And she said, well, if it makes you feel better, they're all the same gender. So I'm knowing, okay, it can either be all girls or all boys. And, and obviously, we have a girl yeah. right here, so you know what it, what it was. So, um... I ran out to him, and he's in the call talking, and I'm like... I thought she was lying. I'm like, all oh, girls, like, uh, I, I would have... I don't know. To me, I, I didn't see a, a world where I had all the same gender. I just knew, like, it would have been two and one. But... It wasn't say I was disappointed. I wasn't disappointed. I was upset. I wanted at least one boy. I was just like, you know, I mean, it is what it is. So It is, but um, I just feel like, you know, if we were to do another um, transfer and I wanted to have a boy, I would have to do another egg retrieval. And I just knew how hard that was for me the first go around. So I'm like, damn. Then I'm like, what if I do it again and I just get more girls? I mean, that's a possibility. Oh, I forgot to mention too in the beginning. When you start the process, they give you the option to either discard your embryos if anything happened to one of us or we decide that we're done or you can donate them to other people who don't get any good embryos or you can just keep them but um we still have ours they're frozen so yeah you know we we hope we plan to hopefully use them the last um, two yeah the last i'm trying two. to convince him to let me put both of them in for twins but it's not happening no 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 but anyway so after that you know we were excited we're like okay we have three girls and, um, you know, we we're excited about that. So we we're like, now we have to prepare for a transfer. Now, mind you, we were going to transfer our embryo December 8th. But obviously, we couldn't do that because our clinic had closed for Christmas time. So it just seemed like it was too rushed. So I ended up having to wait until January 27th, which was a few days after my birthday, to transfer our embryo. Which I guess worked out fine, you know. And also, before we even were able to do the transfer, she had to have a surgery to remove polyps yes. from her uterus. Ugh. That's why it got delayed. I and, forgot. <laughs> and polyps are essentially little uh, growths inside of your uterus that makes it hard for embryos to implant. Mm -hmm. So if you have polyps in your uterus, regardless if you're doing IVF or if you're trying to conceive naturally, um, it's, it's far less likely that you will actually conceive because... You need that that uterus to look a certain way. You need it to be nice, clean, and able to absorb that embryo. So she had I to. I forgot to mention too. When I had my surgery, I had to get one of my fallopian tubes removed on the side that produced less eggs than the side that overproduced. I guess. So um, after that, I ended up doing the HSG. If you 
had an HSG, you know what it is. But basically, they inject fluid into your uterus and they watch it through a like an ultrasound thing to see if the fluid spills out. If the fluid spills out, then your tubes are open. If it doesn't spill out, then your tubes are closed. Sometimes that process too can end up opening your tubes, but I just completely forgot to say that. So yeah, and her tubes were were functioning, but because she had such a low ovarian reserve, it was like it was still difficult to get pregnant. So it's like if we get pregnant naturally, or at least at the time, it would have been like a miracle, miracle, miracle. Because she had the polyp, she had the low ovarian reserve, she had the endometriosis, she had so many things working against her. So, um, you know, at this point, the polyps were removed and she had to recover from that. And, um, you know, we were able to schedule our transfer. And you, you schedule your transfer when you get your first cycle. So, the unfortunate thing about the polyps was I had spoke with a nurse and she told me that I could stop the birth control and I should have just stayed on the birth control because when you get off birth control, you'll have a cycle. So because I stopped, and didn't know when I was going to bleed. So it was low-key irritating me, me even more because I'm like, I have to wait even mm -hmm. longer because I don't know when my cycle is going to come. But um, we scheduled our transfer. I started the IVF transfer medicine January 7th and you're usually on the meds for about two and a half weeks. Um, I was on the estrogen patches twice on my stomach and you change them out every four days along with the estrogen tabs that went under my tongue three times a day. And that's basically to just get your hormones where they need to be before you put the baby in. I forgot about all that. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> and then um, about five to six days before your transfer, you would start the progesterone shots that go in your butt oh, or your those. thigh. We still got oil on the wall from it just exploding <laughs> when trying. Anyway, the progesterone. Wait, wait, wait. So you, you do the progesterone shots for 12 weeks. Go ahead. Before transfer, right? Well, you start six days before transfer and you continue them until you're 12 weeks pregnant. We can do a whole video on shots if y'all want us to. Because I completely forgot a lot of stuff. I need to go back and remember. I love you did too. But the shots, the progesterone ones were the ones that kind of sucked because the oil is so thick. And for her, she needed to do more than like the average person. I was doing three mLs yeah, because so I kept bleeding. So your butt would get sore on each side. You got to figure out di different places to do the shot because it's sore and tender. But anyway, we can do a whole video on that if you guys want us to. But that was such a pain. I forgot about that. I forgot about progesterone. So too. originally, I think I started off with two mLs of the progesterone oil. And um, I think, you know, you started out 1.5 and then you ended up moving up to, all the way to three. And I moved up to three because during my pregnancy, I kept bleeding. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna, a, miscarriage. a miscarriage. But yeah, so after we we did the progesterone shots for how many days? Two weeks? Whatever no, it was. No, five days before five. transfer. That was it? Yeah. I feel like it was so much longer than that. I don't know. But anyway, so the transfer basically is, is similar to everything else that you'll schedule. But the transfer is, is not painful. You're wide awake. Unless some you, people can't she literally, tolerate it. She literally like this. <laughs> and... You know, the doctor, they thaw out the embryo and they, they bring a little embryo and it's like a little syringe type thing. They stick it all the way in the vagina and it on like the a turkey. Like on the monitor, like the it shows the embryo like going in. There's like an air bubble that is like surround I don't know. But basically you're able to see the embryo go inside the vagina. And then they also give you a picture of the embryo. I'll insert it somewhere in the video. They give you a picture of your embryo. Um, that was you. He was a little embryo, the little embryo that was you. Like, mommy. You were so small. Yeah, mommy. So, um, yeah, I had my transfer. Normally, after you have your transfer, you have a beta. That's about two weeks or so after the transfer. Um, they recommend that you don't test early because some people are devastated that they're not pregnant. But then you really could be pregnant. Your hormone levels could just be low. I remember one day I was on my way home from school and I had a really, really, really bad headache. So I had came home and I told Zay, I'm like, I want to test. I think my beta day was on the 14th and I What is a beta day so people know? I just said it. You said it? I said it's where they take your blood. All right, so beta, so let me, for men, right? So beta day, basically that's when you go in and they tell you whether or not you're pregnant or not. It's a blood draw. So it, oh, it is a blood draw, but basically once the transfer happens, there's no guarantee that that embryo is going to implant and stick. So you're praying for like the next, was it? Two weeks. Two weeks, which is... Sometimes eight days. Depending IVF on is just a bunch of waiting and hoping. And it can be very stressful. Because every time you're waiting, 
it could be a situation where things aren't going your way or it could be a situation where things are going your way and they, they everybody want to talk about oh the symptoms you if you are pregnant sucks. yes people don't some people don't have symptoms at all sometimes people and do. the thing is people symptom spot and the symptoms are coming from the medicine that you're on it could be anything so mm -hmm. i just tell people especially if you're going through ivf and you can go through ivf at any age so like we're you know we're considered i guess younger for ivf so i was what like 20 25 when we started the the process or mm -mm, think or just turned 26 like last year but like 26. actually starting you know yeah we started october 2021 I'm talking about like the entire process though. But when we started IVF, that I was 26, right? And yeah, you were I was 20, 20, 20, 23. 23. So age does not matter in a sense of you're gonna feel the same emotions. You you know it's it's gonna suck a lot of the times. But the highs are very high and the lows are can be very low. So just try to keep a level mindset. Um, but yeah, so she wanted to test early. So. I just, I didn't feel like myself and I didn't know if it was because the medicine or what it was. So I said I was going to test, but I told myself before I took this test, I said, I understand that this could go either way. I could either be pregnant or I could either not be pregnant. But whatever the outcome was, I was going to be happy with it if we had to do another cycle. She was not going to be happy. I'm going mean, to let y'all know right now. She's saying that now, but she was not going to be happy. It you, was going to be difficult. Listen, so, you just have to be realistic with yourself. It could go either way. There's no 100% no, you but I'm, be but I'm telling people, when you're in the situation, it's easy for us to come back and say it like this. But when you're in it, it is very, very hard to, to stay positive when you're not sure if the results are going to be positive. So what she did was she came home, she took two pregnancy tests, and... This man going to take the test and run. I, I took the test and I ran upstairs with him. And I'm like, okay, I want to be the one to tell her if it's positive or negative. You because, mean tell me. Because I feel like I could break the news to her better than these pins, basically. That's why I did it. So I ran upstairs and literally... You know, That's why I ain't get no cute video, y'all. No, nah, there's a video. There's a video. It's not cute though. She boohoo crying, snot everywhere. Like it, it, it ain't no. I mean, I don't know. I might put it in the video. We have to see how I feel. Nah, I, I gotta watch. You it. don't want to put that in there. But so I ran upstairs and literally 30 seconds after like me running upstairs, I see two lines and it's not even like it's a really really faint line. We're really, like squinting. Like it's obviously two lines. So I come downstairs. And I show her, and then that's when she starts boohoo crying, looking real ugly with it, just. But it was like, okay. I, I, I feel like, you know, you go through IVF, it's like you worry about every little thing. First, you worry about getting enough embryos. Then you get the embryos, you worry about genetic testing. Then you get the genetic testing, you worry about the embryo sticking. Then the embryo sticking, you worry about miscarrying. Like, the worries never stop. The worries don't even stop once you're pregnant. Like, you would just worry, okay, I worry that I make it to 24 weeks viability then you hit 24 weeks i worry that i'll make it to 30 you make it to 30 i wonder if i have or i worry that i'll have a safe uh delivery and then after you had a baby it don't end it keeps going you just That's worry about it, the baby now it, it's not like you have to put yourself in the right space mentally because it you can definitely get overwhelmed and you don't want to be overwhelmed the entire process because this is a long journey i mean it can be long for the each person, but ours wasn't as long ours, as many it, people, but it was long. It is long, regardless. If it, everything works out for you, just like how it worked out for us, it is long still. Mm -hmm. And even if, like, it, it doesn't work out for you for, you know, the first two times, that's easy, almost three years of you or, or more, because sometimes you need to take a break instead of, you know, being Topping on the another one. So, like, it's a journey. It literally is a journey. And um, luckily, everything worked out for us. You know, we may do a story about her delivery. If you watch her TikTok, then yeah. you kind of have a understanding of what what went down. But I just want to say too early in the pregnancy. So I ended up seeing my IVF doctor until about 12 weeks, and then I switched to OBGYN. And while I was at my IVF doctor, I would come in every single week for ultrasound. They would just make sure that the baby's growing, everything's going good. I remember the first time we had went, and they were like, "Oh, we think it could be twins, or maybe you know." I'm like. Don't tell me that. But anyways, um, uh, she would have been happy. She's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but during um, my sweet. pregnancy, at five weeks, four days, eight weeks, four days, and I think it was eleven weeks, four days, I had blood, like period blood, red. And um, 
we found out that I had some, what was a subchorionic hematoma or something like that. And apparently those things are common if you go through IVF, but it's very scary and very nerve wracking. I feel like she, she had everything that you could possibly have. Like every, like every option. Everything that, you know, that would scare you to think that the baby's miscarried. Like it was just like, oh, I God. remember the first time I bled, I started crying. I'm like, oh. Oh and I also wanted to say too, even though I did up my progesterone dosage, I'm A negative blood. So if you're A negative and I forgot the other type blood, you have to do a Rogam shot every time you get pregnant in case your baby has a different blood type than you. So I had to get the Rogam earlier in my pregnancy around. Oh, oh sorry, mommy. mommy. I had to get the shot <laughs> at five weeks, four days, and then I got it again at 28 weeks pregnant. And then I had to get it again after she was born because her blood type is different than mine. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we can if, do a more in-depth video about my Yeah, life. each one because there's so much stuff there's to so go into detail about. We really just scratched the surface of the journey. But, um, and if we do decide to do IVF again, we'll probably document it because we wanted to do it this go-round. But I but, didn't want to document it and then it not work. <laughs> Like, yeah, that was the main thing and that's just being honest and transparent because there are a lot of people that post it and even if it doesn't work you know they still you know post and i have a lot of respect for people like that because it's but, hard but to to me well not to me but really, really more so for you i think it'll be very very hard to relive some of that and, and then a lot you of just want to forget the, about it and move yeah on. and a lot of people on the internet are rude so like you post your process and people comment why don't you just adopt why don't you adopt a baby for foster care? And it's like, that's not something that you want to hear while you're trying to go through this process. It's already hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, it, and if you're the type of person that that immediately jumps to those other, you know, solutions, you have to think about it like this. If IVF is just a part of the journey, then why not explore it to the fullest before we move on to something else? Because I'm not so, going to lie, if it didn't work, me and him had already considered adoption. Yeah, we did. And, and and what what's annoying is a lot of people will say, you know, oh, there, there's a lot of kids that need, you know, help or this or that. And it's like, I understand that, but it don't feel like it's your responsibility to save the world. Like, as, my thing is, if you do, why don't you adopt one? I mean, at the end of the day, if, if you want to have kids, you know, you can have kids. You know, we have the technology nowadays to, to help you get to your goal. And I think it, it's insensitive for people to just say, why don't you just adopt? Because ultimately, that's what we're here to do. We're here to create. We're here to, to, to build families. And not to say that adopted kids aren't families. I think that they definitely are. But they're, they're a part of the process of, of trying to build a family. And until you've exhausted your abilities to do that on your own, then of course, like I think adoption is great. And I would... Definitely I feel like if you adopt. have the chance to go through IVF or do IUI, go for it. You know what I mean? Like, and also, I want to cut you off. Also, people think that adoption is just super easy, it, quick. It, mm -hmm. Adoption can be much longer than IVF and much more stressful than and IVF. And much more expensive. So, and I know people who've adopted kids and, you know, their bundles of joy. Everybody loves their kids. But at the same time, for people to assume that you know, IVF is, is much more difficult and you should just automatically consider adoption. That That's just not factually true. And I hope people, you know, do their research because before this, I didn't know a lot of this stuff, but now I do because I talk to people all the time. And even if we can have more babies through IVF or naturally, we may even still consider, I still would you know, consider adoption. you know, so, you know, don't guilt trip people that that's totally wrong. And to I me. feel like, like I was saying, if you have a chance to go through IVF, go through it you know what i mean like even if stuff don't work out in your favor you you had the chance to go through something and try mm -hmm. right mommy girl well, let's go ahead and wrap it up right now i know this is a longer video um but we wanted to just kind of show you our journey and, and why we really hadn't been posting a whole whole lot um since we moved into the house because that's really been our our priority is our building our family and um you know making sure that we were in the right you know, mindset emotionally to to be able to create content for YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys have any questions in regards to the IVF journey or anything of that matter, go ahead and comment below. We'll answer that in another video. If you also want to know our birth story, our traumatic birth story, comment below. We'll probably put that out too. Yeah. So. But thank you guys for always supporting us and being there for us, even though we haven't been consistent. It was just this year alone has been a lot going on.
Yeah. And we just, like he said, we wanted to be in the correct mind space, you know, to go through that. I didn't want to have to stress about anything else that I already was stressing about. Mm -hmm. So if you made it this far, make sure you drop a like for us. Really appreciate it. And um, yeah, we will catch you guys in the next video. Happy holidays and uh, treat each other right. You know what I'm saying? Peace.